Hello and welcome guys. We are going to be doing this pretty sunset with watercolor pens and I'll see you in just a second. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here to show you how to do this fun sunset with watercolor pens on watercolor paper. And on the chat manning it for me today is my husband, Mark. Say hello, Mark. Hello. <laughs> so Mark will be watching the chat and grabbing any questions. If you have a question and he doesn't get it, ask again because sometimes things go by and you never know what's going to happen in a live show. And I just want to say thank you so much to all of my patrons who have been showing up to these videos and my subscribers and supporters on YouTube and Patreon because you guys are the reason why I can still <laughs> keep doing this as a full-time job. I really want to also say thank you to my husband who is taking time away from his painting <laughs> to be able to man the chat for me. So thank you, honey. <laughs> All right. So we're using these Arteza brush pens and they are watercolor ink in a tube with an actual real brush on the ends. And it is a plastic filament type brush. They are uh, trim to be nice and pointy so you can get in and get those tiny little details, but I'm using it more like just watercolor paint and I'm rubbing it onto the paper and then using a water brush, which is a tube filled with water with a little real brush end on it, or a cup of water and a regular brush with this little ceramic palette because some of the colors don't go over the wet paper very well. They uh, work better if you pick it up off of something with a different brush and lay it on. So let's get started. I have 140 pound, 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is, I'm gonna make noise. This is the Arteza sheets. It's their expert paper. All of the links for the materials are down below in the more information box. They are affiliate links and I will earn a small commission if you make a purchase. And that's the same on Amazon also. If there's something that's an Amazon link or even if there's nothing you want to buy that's on Amazon from my links, if you click to Amazon through my link, I'll get credit for getting you to Amazon. And that helps to grow my my uh, supply stash, which I have been de-stashing. I have been cleaning and clearing and getting my studio all set up for the new season. And hopefully I'll do a video about that. If anybody's interested, let me know in the comments below if you're interested in seeing my studio all cleaned up. I do have some pictures of it before. It's not pretty, <laughs> but let's get going. Washi tape around the edges of the paper. And that just keeps the pretty clean edge for the watercolor. So that way, if you wanted to mat this, you could drop it into a mat and you're not going to lose any of the picture. Do you have any questions? Not, now. not yet. All right. Well, hello everybody. Right Woohoo. Thank you guys so much for being here. All right. I know I've been in for it. You can do this with watercolor pencils. And what I should do is do one of these with watercolor pencils. Thank you. That's a great idea. I'm going to zoom my little screen in here. So I have to slide this over and make it bigger. <laughs> so you'll be able to see me working on this. Now I'm looking at this picture and I'm seeing my colors that I need. I know that I need kind of an orangey, this sort of a honey orange color. I need a yellow. And to get that deep sort of purpley pinky color, I've got this uh, thistle purple and my blue 
because blue going over that orange is going to give me that toned down color. It's using color theory. Orange and blue or the purpley color are kind of um, complementary. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. So that's what I'll be doing for that. But to start off with, I want to get just a base layer of this yellow, bright yellow in. We're going to start with the lightest yellow that I have, which is a lemon. Move that like that. Sorry about the little bit of glare on here, but to get a good picture so that you guys can see it, I had to print it on the glossy photo paper. <laughs> just the way it is. All right, so yellow brush pen. I see the sun here almost dead center. So I'm going to go with my brightest yellow and give me a yellowy sun. And I'm going to go ahead and look at this and see where is the bright. And I'm just lightly, I'm laying this down. You can see it just breaking up and skipping across. We're going to put a lot of water on here to move this paint around. But to start off with, I need basically a light coat of this yellow. I will put a little bit of the orangey yellow, a little bit darker yellow on. I am looking down, and it looks like a mess. It's going to look like a mess for a little bit. So just stick with me. It will look better in just a couple minutes. I am looking at this and going, well, that's kind of my horizon E area. And if I was really being particular, I would grab a ruler, measure down, and draw a very light, faint pencil line just to keep my horizon straight. But... I'm playing by the seat of my, flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm going to go ahead and you see how it's lighter and brighter through here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that yellow just skipped in across. And I see some of it coming almost at an angle down here. And just to give me an idea that it's going to be going at an angle. See, really, you probably could have just colored the whole thing a light yellow. <laughs> But, you know, I'm trying to be an artist about this, but it's still, this is easy coloring. See, I'm just putting mostly the bright sun and then a little bit of yellow around to give me an idea. I'm going to set this one to the side so I know I use that one. So if I need to enhance my colors, I will come back and grab it. I'm going to grab that honey orangey color. It's a light orange and I'm going to put a bit of that. It's a lot darker than that yellow. So I'm just going to start dropping that in in a few areas. Looking at my reference. I'm using a reference. References are your friends, especially when you're doing something that's real-ish. But this is not going to look real. It's going to look abstract. But it's still... It's believable if you have a reference and you sort of lay your colors down in a way that gives you references to that references to the reference <laughs> so and I'm not worried about my super dark set I want to go ahead and drop some wa water on here and we are going to I'm going to take this water brush. This is just a really little travel, tiny travel one. I'm going to drop the water just straight out of the brush. Boom, boom, boom. Right on. See, just sprinkling it on. And I'm starting in the middle. I'm really getting that water into those colors. And I'm going to start moving them around. I do have a heat tool so I can dry the paper if I get way too much. But right now, it's just, let's see. Actually, I'm going to dry right around the sun. Because look at that. We get that glow going. Just picking it up with the paper towel. Just picking up with the paper towel. It's really, it's quite cute because Mark is sitting on the other side of my uh, monitors and he can't see where I am right this second. He has about a 40 second delay. <laughs> but there we go. So now I've got this orange and yellow. 
we're already getting this sort of warm, sunsetty type of glow going. I'm taking this paper towel and I'm just going to walk my way down the center, trying to sort of line it up with the, the sun. Okay, I need to fold that little bit of tape back because it keeps getting caught on my reference. All right, so there we are right now. And I can go ahead and I can tap it because I've got plenty of water on here. Move that color around. I like that. Now before it's dry, okay, I didn't get the tape rack. <laughs> All right, so before it is dry, I want to get some of this lavender purple color in and I know that it doesn't color on wet paper so if you've got a pen that doesn't color on wet paper what you do is you take a ceramic plate a piece of plastic anything that you can just scribble that color down onto because then I'm going to pick it up can tell my the tip of my pen was a little bit dirty. I'm just loading the palette right here with pen ink straight down. There we go. Boy, that was a weird sentence. <laughs> and then I am picking up with a slightly damp brush. I just dipped it in and then I'm going to dry it off. Yes? Is it easy? Up the color off the water brush and now. Oh, yes. Yeah, maybe okay, so look here. I've got my water brush and I'm picking up some of that some of that color. You see how the end of the brush is getting all kind of dirty? You know, I've got ink on there. All I do is squeeze the water brush, get a little bit of water onto my paper towel, and run the brush in a circle. And now it's all clean. It's a little bit stained with green. Let's see if that's going to come off. Oh, no, that's a green. <laughs> what I'm seeing is the uh, green leaf <laughs> on the paper towel through the... <laughs> Here, let's move over where there's nothing underneath. Now we can see it's nice and clean. <laughs> oh, that was silly. That's okay. You know, sometimes things like that happen. I need to put a little bit more of that purple down because I just picked a bunch of it up with my, with my water brush. And this is going to go that deep kind of purpley brownie tone, purpley gray type tone, picking that up. And right up here at the top, I'm going to start laying that in to give me that heavier area. And it's light. This is light because I don't want to commit to it too soon. But I'm just generally going where the color is on that picture, on that photograph. Generally, not, not too worried. Right here, we have another big cloud big, big cloud bank. And we're putting in the shadows of the clouds. Now I'm working on the wet paper. So these clouds are just sort of softening up. We'll firm them up a little bit more with a slightly darker tone in a minute. So there, getting that going up like that. Let's see. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to work with this in a big enough form so you guys can see it and see the background here. I do need a deeper purple. I'm grabbing the amethyst purple. I believe it's in, see, it's just a little bit darker. I believe it's in the 48 color set also. I'm trying to use the basic colors that are, that come in the smaller sets. I do have the big <laughs> 96 colors, but I try not to use all the colors. Ooh, see, now we can go in and start putting some of those little darker indications with this one. 
Um, no, this photo is from Unsplash, and it is really a very pretty picture. Um, Sebastian, I if I didn't put it in the description field, I will put it in the description field. And I'm not not being a slave to the original here, so if there's my, my clouds are going to look different. And that's okay. Just letting them go. Letting them go. And then, let's see here. This is kind of my horizon line right there. So I might just go and give myself a horizon now to keep track of. I did go over my sun a little bit. I will go in with the white gouache because the purple as soon as it goes on there it pretty much covers the white and you can't go back the yellow you can lift all right so down this side I need just the tippy tippy tip of my brush and i'm sort of swinging back and forth not covering up all the color but just dropping some of that darker darker tone in. It's not very dark. You can see it's not very dark. I am going to be working darker when we get down here to the front. But I do need some more I need some more darker colors. So I'm going to drop the this is the blueberry blue on here. That's going to be my darkest dark. I won't be using any black in this one, I don't think. but I do need the purple before I go to the blue. <laughs> so now we just start getting these colors on the palette. And you can mix the colors when they're on the palette also if you wanna to get tones of colors. The only thing you don't have with this, just like regular watercolors, you don't have a white in the pens. You do need to use white gouache to get your white back if you have it go over it too strong. Just working that in. I want to get up around that edge. I like that feathering that's happening. My sky has sort of creeped into the going in its own direction. <laughs> oh, let's see here. I was down here at the bottom getting some water. We've got, I need to go up on the tip of my, my brush and just sort of very lightly go across and then swinging, trying to keep horizontal to the edge of the paper. You know, you don't... You don't have to be perfectly horizontal. You do want your horizon to be horizontal. You want it to be level. But uh, the waves are coming into a, like a beach and so as they come in, you see an angle happen. I'm going to start picking up a little bit of that blue into my purple. So I'm just moving it over into the purple. See, it made it a slightly lighter tone of purple. Get this darkening up on the bottom edge a little bit. The paper is drying all by itself. My clouds are, my clouds are bleeding out nicely. Go ahead and put that little bit darker all the way going out to the edge. And yes, this is bleeding down here also because the paper is still wet. But doing it like this, you get these softer transitions and waves. And then we've got a much heavier area down here. Keeping it more to the purple side keeps that from going as green with the with the yellow. And then just working my way over to the edge. There we go. And then we've got a little one that's kind of coming across. I'm going right through that little bit of sunlight. I hope I'm not talking too softly. 
I've got my microphone in a different place for this video because I have been working on my studio. I have been cleaning. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Yep, I just darkened up the bottom of that cloud, didn't I? Darken up the bottom of the clouds, the edge of the clouds that's farther away from the sun. The sun's right here, so the outside edges are darker than the area close to the sun. And if it's in front of the sun, it can actually be a little bit darker also. So this one right here could be like that. You see how it's a little bit darker? But if it's right in the path of the sun, you will it will blast straight through it. But doing this, now I'm getting that transition area between the sky, the brighter edge of clouds that you can still see are clouds, and then that darkness that's working its way across. So if you're new here, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. I have to remember those things. And if you have any questions that don't get answered in the chat or in the video, make sure and leave your questions in the comments below. I will be checking those comments for the first couple hours for sure. And then as the day goes on, I will pop in and out and check comments and answer questions and read the chat. <laughs> So it's just a layering process. My clouds are going more blue. I think I want to grab a little bit of this uh, bubble bubblegum pink. And I'm going to throw a bit of bubblegum pink here. Not because it's going to be pink, but because it's going to purple up things with the uh, blue. It's going to be muted just because of the Oh, and when you get a darker color onto your pen, all you have to do is tap it on a paper towel, and now I've got my pretty clean pink again. So let's see. Oh yeah, there, warming up the cloud. You know, Technicolor clouds. I like Technicolor clouds. All right. Warm up this one. And no matter what, the clouds are below the sun. There are no clouds higher than the sun. The sun is always going to be higher than the clouds. Meaning that, you know, the sun is way billions of miles away from us and the clouds are always going to be closer and the clouds will always be darker in this type of a situation where the angle of the sun is going down. So you can have clouds that are above the sun and they are dark. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Just like you can't have clouds going behind the moon. Unless that's a stylistic choice in a fantasy world. Then you could. What do you guys think? Are you... Do you think you can do this? I think you can. Now, I'm just going to take a slightly damp paper towel and just wipe off that little bit of ink. There's, I mean, look, there's hardly anything there, but I wanna have a clean spot to pick up some of this lovely honey color. I love that color. Make sure my brush is clean. Just swish it out, pick up some of that color because I want to work some of that in around this side of these clouds. Get some of that little sun flare type color going into the clouds. 
and any brush this just this is a uh, creative mark mimic number 12 round it is a synthetic um, synthetic hair type brush and it is not required you could do this all with the water brush and pick up the colors I just happened to do this this time <laughs> okay I want to go a little deeper so neon pink maybe the neon is almost a peachy pink so I'm thinking that the peachy pink with that orange is going to give us that honey honey orange color it's going to give us a really nice mixture oh yeah you make it look easy to follow says MD glass painter Katie says loving the pink there we go several people have joined now excellent excellent oh I'm so glad that you guys are here you know and that you're finding that it's it is easy to do you just you know, one brush stroke at a time, get the paper wet, see what the paint does. You don't have to, you don't have, I mean, it's paper. It's just paper. But I am really enjoying how this pink and that uh, hot pink and the honey color are blending together. I want to soften up that line just a little bit. So I'm just taking that brush. I could take a water brush. All right, so now I want to get some of that color down here in the water. That's this area here on either side of the sun path where it starts to shadow out a little bit. It's a little bit bright, so I will be taking some blue over that, but I'm just dancing it across. I'm barely touching it with the tip of the paper, the tip of the paintbrush. And then right down here in the front, there's more of that color right along the edge of that darker blue so you look at things and you notice and there's a difference between seeing things and noticing things you can see it and not notice it you ever lose your glasses and they're right where you put them you you see them but you can't you don't notice them. You can't see them. They're on top of your head. Oh, yes. They're on top of your head. You you don't see them. <laughs> and you don't notice them. But if you notice the details, notice where those colors are touching each other. Let's see. I need a little more that orangey tone. I have enough pink still, but that orangey color with the pink. I really like how that warms that up even more. I mean, the orange is a nice warm color, but that neon pink just sort of makes that orange pop even more. But I am not, like I said, I am not paying super close attention. I'm using my reference to give me the location for things, but I'm not, I'm not measuring, okay, that cloud comes down this far. Who needs to do that? You know, we could stop right there. That, that would not be a problem if I stopped right there, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I see a deeper, darker blue in here, in that wave. So I'm going to, it's, it's lighter on the top and it's darker underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit darker underneath. Leaving some of that lighter blue on the top. You could do this whole thing, yes, with colored pencils. I have done many, many, whoops, sorry, I slid off the screen. I have done many watercolor pencil type paintings. I especially like doing um, 
inking a drawing and then coloring my designs with watercolor pencils because you can really get intense. You can drag your color across. Let's see here. So back here in the very background, we've got, it's not as dark, but it's a darker tone. So I'm just going to make a few lines. The paper is drying out a little bit so I can get some a little bit more defined lines with the tip of the brush. I'm pretty much done with my clouds I think. I will be going in and putting a bit of uh, white gouache to brighten up the sun and maybe put a few little waves edges here. But we are getting really close to being done with this one. I have this, this one is different than all of the other ones that I've done. Oh, Katie says she's got to go eat the baby. Ah, well, have fun, Katie. Enjoy that little bundle. Katie Nana. Katie Nana is from uh, Peter Pan. Katie Nana was the pup, <laughs> the very smart, the smartest one in the whole group of kids was Katie Nana. And she was the dog. Beautiful English sheepdog. Not saying our Katie is. <laughs> But sometimes you get that little reference in your head. All right, so let's see, what are we doing here? What do I do? What do I need to do? I need to maybe darken up just a little bit more in the clouds underneath of the right hand side here as it's getting closer to the horizon. Maybe just a bit. And maybe just a bit right up here. I'm going to water it down. See if I can blend it in. Make a few floating clouds that are a little bit stronger. I like that. I do need some of that orangey tone in there. That orange on top of the blue just gives it much more weight using your complementary colors, layering them up even when it's drying out here like that. I'm just Oh, there we go. That cloud down here at the underneath, just sort of dragging across. A little bit of weight, a little bit of weight. That weight is what makes it look more cloudy. I want to drag that one down just a little bit. See, you know, you start refining, but then you also have to be careful of not going too far. Warm it up just a smidge. Bring that down just a bit. Now it's just refining. It's just a few taps here and there. Try not to do too much. Dragging it out, bringing it a little bit darker as it comes down towards the horizon. Trying not to overwork it, which is my downfall. I tend to overwork things. That is just a little bit too bright right there, but the but the gouache is going to help us out with that, I think. So to use the gouache, I'm just going to wipe off my palette right here. 
and I'm just using a the Arteza gouache. It's it comes in kits of 12, 24, 48, I think. I'm not sure, but it's, uh, you can't buy them open stock. So buy whatever the smallest set is and see if you like it. The, oh, there is a coupon code. There is a coupon code for Arteza in the more information box. And it is good until January 30th. And then I'll be getting another coupon code because I'll be doing some other project. If you check out Arteza and um, see some product that you think I would do really well, you know, reviewing, let me know what it is you want to see because they just contacted me and asked me what I wanted to do next. And I'm enjoying doing these for them. And as we get more viewers and more people buying the products from Arteza, they'll actually start thinking about sponsoring me with real money and not just free product. So I am going to just put a little bit of just, I mean, you see how small that is? Tiny, tiny little bit of the Arteza gouache right on here. I like working from the gouache in, um, just from the tube. A lot of people like using it when it's uh, dry. What's that? Oh, Kimberly Carr, how do I find someone that could pay, I could pay to paint something for me? How do you find someone that can, that you can pay to paint something for you? There are tons of people. What you're looking for is to do a commission. So you want to commission someone to paint something for you. And uh, there's many groups out there. There's um, uh, different, different organizations like uh, Fiverr where uh, people, artists, or a whole bunch of people that are different, um, that have different skills. And if you say, I'm looking for someone to paint a portrait of my dog and I want it to be uh, 24 by 48. And you s basically open it up and people will bid on your job. And you know, some somebody will say, well, I'll do it for $25. And somebody will say, I'll do it for $450. Uh, then you look at their portfolios and you say, well, you know what? Maybe this guy who said $80 is going to be closer to my budget and he's got more skills than the person who asked $20. So you can, you know, then go into a contract with with that person and do a commission. You can also just see if you put a message out on Facebook or on Instagram or Twitter and say, I'm looking for someone to do a commission and you'll get, you might get responses that way. Also, just be careful, make sure that you always have a contract with the person that you're doing the, that you're having the commission done, that you have appropriate expectations of the skill level based on their portfolio and that you have an appropriate understanding of the time it takes to do the quality that you want. Now, if you say, well, I know somebody who can do it in two days, but that somebody can, who can do it in two days might have 30 jobs lined up and they won't be able to get to you for two months. So check those things and go into it knowing what you're what's going on and make sure you have a contract that says this is how much I'm paying and uh, if there's going to be any uh, extension of time make sure and put that extension of time or no extension of time in the contract and understand that you will want to be paying them at least half up, up front and you know that you're not going to get that money back so again, having a contract that is legal that says you'll pay half up front, you'll pay the other half when you pick it up or have it delivered to you, those kinds of things. Oh, other things to think about. The cost of delivery, if they're not in your city, it's going to cost money for them to deliver it to you. So again, I've got uh, gouache drying on the tip of my brush. I hope that answered your question. Yep. It probably was more answer than you wanted, that but helps. And a couple other people gave her suggestions too. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So now I'm going in and putting some white in where the sun is behind that cloud, sort of glowing through just a tiny bit, a, a tiny touch. The sun actually shows up pretty much as white to your eye, even though we think of, you know, the sun as being yellow. It's so hot and so bright that our eyes can't, can't see it all. And if I don't get this perfectly round, I can go back and fix it. I'm working a little bit far away from it. I would probably put it up closer to my face. <laughs> All right, so there's the there's that part. On the horizon, in this picture, you see where the sun is reflecting on the edge of the horizon. It's a little half crescent or half half circle. And it's straight below the sun. And if you look at the the width of the brightest highlight of the sun, it's the width that you make the sun. It doesn't, it doesn't grow wider as it comes closer to you. This tunnel of light is straight. There's no perspective on it. Did you notice that? There's no perspective on that sun because of the, doesn't matter where the angle of it is, it is going to be straight down the center in line with the sun, but it doesn't make a, a shine in the sky. It's only when it hits a surface that it's making that shine. So I hope that helps. So right here, straight below on that horizon, except that I just put it above. Well, I just made my horizon high. I just dropped it in the wrong spot. So we're going to clean it off. Wet gouache, you can erase. <laughs> and then I want to take just, I'm going to take and just color a little bit of the brush pen right on the tip of my paint brush. So I can maybe drop a little bit. Oh yeah nice and soft, a little bit of that color right back onto the sky. And that's how you fix that. <laughs> so there we go. Now I'll grab my gouache again, come down here. My, my horizon was this blue line straight below the sun, little crescent, little half circle. And I might have to put a little bit more of a little bit more of my sun up in the sky also, because I want that to be a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, that's better. And it doesn't have to show a perfect round edge because we've got clouds that are going across. And now I'm going to start working some of this bright white down straight below and it's not in every it's not a solid path it's a broken path the water is catching it at different angles we can just start dancing it along now, as I come down here to this darker, I'm going to skip over that for a moment and stay lined up here and go, there's my bright sun reflection right down here. A little bit on top of the orange. It's broken. It's not a perfect, not a perfect circle. There's one little spot that's sort of a heavier, darker spot there. I'm enjoying that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this blue right here on the palette next to the gouache because you know, you can tint your gouache. 
gouache is just an opaque watercolor and these pens are transparent watercolor. So I'm going to tint up some gouache here to get this little bit of that bluey colored highlight. go. I hope you guys will try this out. And if you do, make sure and tag me at Deliberately Creative on Facebook and uh, Facebook and Instagram. Those are my, my places where it's easy to tag me. Now I'm taking this sort of grayed out color and I'm just pushing it on top of that little bit of a wave that's coming in at the shoreline, just sort of pushing it in, letting the brush tip sort of dance around. I'm trying to not have a, um, a consistent pattern. You know, I want my line to, some of it is falling over that really dark. See how that, oh, this really is looking like sparkling water. Yay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always, it's always a trick to see if what you want to do is going to actually work when you're doing it in front of people. <laughs> now there's a bit of that shadowier line right here. Just working it across. You see a little bit more detail in the water as it's coming forward towards you. There we go. And then I will put just, even though it's not super bright on here, I will go ahead and put a brighter highlight right here on the very, very edge at the front. Let's see. And there's this kind of glowy blue area right here. I can just do that with the gouache. And that sort of bluey shadowy bit. And maybe, maybe we'll take out, take out that, uh, white spot that was sitting there. There we go. We're just dancing this along. This will be um, chalkier looking because it's the, the gouache has things that make it, opa um, that opacify the paper or uh, opacify the ink dye pigment. There it is. The pigment my brain. There we go. All right. I do want to deepen this up in the center just a little bit. Although, what do you guys think? I, I Off over here on this edge, definitely. It's too light. It's too light out here in the very, very, very back edge. So, all right, I think it's looking okay. What do you guys think? What do you think? Do you think it needs a lot more? Do you think we're pretty much done? I think we're pretty much done. Beautiful. The painting. So what we'll do is I will hit it real quick with the, with my heat tool just to see, I can't, I, I can't keep my hands off it. There we go. I needed a little bit more of a cloud that was coming across here. Oh, and up here, we don't want, we don't want white sky. We'll just, we'll just throw another little cloud in. Happy little clouds. 
They just find their way. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to pull that tape off and see how... Oh, I was going to dry it real quick so it, I don't end up... And drying is... It shouldn't be too loud. I'll... I'll well... Oh, I was going to put that little tiny bit of, I'll just, this is just a little liner brush. Uh, it's an Arteza Zero, I think, size zero or one. I can't see it because there's, there's stuff on it, but I just wanted to put just a tiny little bit, just a few little sparkles on that, those edges of the waves that are kind of coming forward. Just to pop it up. Is that a hair dryer? Sure quiet. This is not a hair dryer. This is a Ranger craft, it, craft, Ranger craft tool. It's a heated tool. It was purchased three years ago. And when I got it, they were very highly rated. When I went to look for another one because I thought I had lost this, they the ratings had really dropped so i'm not sure that's very hit and miss people are you know some people love it still when they're getting them and some people are saying they are not uh, not like what they used to be so i'm just right on that very front edge where it's falling over getting a little bit of that highlight just brings this brings it forward Mona's got that tool, too. Ah. Did you get yours a while back or recently, Mona? So just tap, tap, tapping, trying to not, not be too precious with the edge. I want it to look like it's randomly, randomly falling over. There we go. Maybe a little bit of some sparkle that's just on the water where it's hitting the beach right here. There we go. All right. A while back. A while back, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to pull that tape off and reveal that pretty crisp white edge. You can use the tape again. Just lay it down on a surface that isn't, um, that, that isn't going to grab it and keep it forever. <laughs> or not, you don't have to use the tape over and over again. It's fairly inexpensive. And one more. There we go. All right. Not too bad. There we are. I think we, I think it turned out pretty darn well. We love this part when the tape comes in. <laughs> Yeah. Hey guys, so thank you so much. Remember, if you have any questions about the materials that I use, they're all listed down below in the more information box and the affiliate links to Arteza and Amazon are down there. The link to my uh, Teespring shop where you can find this fun owl t-shirt and a lot of other products is down below in that more information box. Also, I do have a Patreon if you want to help support my uh my YouTube business. Thank you. I appreciate all of my patrons and I appreciate you being here live in the chat and sharing my videos and creativity with your friends. Thank you. And remember to go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.